In my current role, I'm general counsel of uh, Russell Investments uh, North America, or Americas to be exact. So that includes Canada, U.S., and Mexico. And I've been in this role now for about three years, but with Russell for eight. And frankly speaking, in my role today, uh, although it's the financial services industry, I practice in all areas. So I do everything, everything matters, employment law, securities, tax, you name it, uh, and that's what I currently do. But although law is interesting, Frank speaking, what's more interesting to me is actually working with others and managing those individuals come up the curve and really reach their potential. That's what I'm really interested in doing. So that's, I, I think I have the best of both worlds right now, which is being able to work with a team and also being able to practice law. What I really like is that it's real life issues. And what I mean by that is a lot of the decisions that I make and that I make with others affects individuals, affects the company, affects lives. It's not theoretical. There's an impact right away, uh, whether that's employment related or an acquisition. An acquisition could result in tax consequences for the company, could result in real long-term consequences if it's a wrong acquisition. And frankly speaking, it can result in job loss or job gain. But either way, what I like about how I practice and what I practice in is that I see the immediate impact, and that's really important to me. Well, a long time ago, I used to be in the Canadian military for a very short time, but during that time period, uh, frankly speaking, I was, well, I felt that I was, I was having to lead a platoon with not enough resources. So I went and did what anybody would do if they don't feel they have enough resources, I went and complained. And I complained to my commanding officer, and I gave him a big soliloquy about why this is all wrong and what, why I need resources, why is it that I can't do this, can't do that. And what I was hoping for, expecting, was great you know, words of wisdom, including resources. So my commanding officer looked up from what he was doing and heard me out and very softly told me that totally understand what I'm saying and that he has words of wisdom that he received a long time ago that he'd like to pass on to me. And that was, just do it. In fact, he didn't say, just do it. He said something else, but I got the message. At the end of the day, we can always complain about, we lack this, we lack that. But what I wasn't looking at is what I had in front of me, which was I had a very capable group and I had enough there to get us to the next hurdle. And when we got, to the, when we got over the next hurdle, then I could start talking about resources. But he wanted me to see, to get to the, to the first step. So it, it's always been in my mind saying, okay, if you don't feel you have enough, what do you have enough to do? And that's what I always keep in my mind, just do it. My family immigrated to Canada from Pakistan. So we're total immigrants. We came here and my parents didn't immigrate for better jobs. They, had, they actually had great opportunities uh, in Pakistan itself and, and other, other, other parts of the world. But they came here for a better life. And specifically what it meant for a better life was education. And my dad, who's been a mentor, um, he's passed away, he passed away a long time ago. I was a, I was a young man, but um, his words still stay with me. And that was that education was the great equalizer in your life that don't forget that, that no matter what, even if you don't have a good job, even if you don't have the best house, you have your mind. And I've always felt that's something that I want to do. I want to make sure that others have that same opportunity that I did to become educated, grow up in a wonderful country, best country in the world, as far as I'm concerned. So what I'm really involved with is I'm trying to build secular schools in Pakistan. And these schools are actually very well run, the organization, if I could plug it in, is the Citizens Foundation. It's, it's a global organization. It's incredibly well done, well run. And again, I emphasize the emphasis on secular, it's secular education. But the education that they provide to these individuals um, or these students, these young, these young uh, achievers is really, I would say, on par with North America. And that's what these students need. They need the best in the world. And I have no doubt that all those individuals will also achieve their potential. And I just want to make sure that I can help them do that. I think the in-house role that I'm in, you're faced with issues all day long. There'll be, many of them are, have significant consequences. Some of them don't. Some of them are urgent, some of them are not. I've always said that unless it's a life and death situation or some sort of criminal issue, it's not something to panic over right away. So I would say the, the, the greatest, uh, greatest approach or the greatest way to, to, to excel in that role 
is to approach it with a sense of humor, to smile, and to just do it. They're just issues, and all they are is it, an issue is just, it's really a resolution that's just waiting there to be grabbed and put in front of the issue, and then you're done. I think the real challenges that the profession has is its ability to be, become more diverse. And, I, and I, think, I think great strides have been made in law, certainly from, from the time that I started out, when most large firms were shut out to visible minorities. I do think that the profession has made great strides, but I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's comparable to, to medicine or other areas where there really is an open mind. Uh, having said that, these challenges in the beginning really were opportunities because it led me to the path that I'm in on now. And there's no way I would trade what I do today for working anywhere else.